we put an iconic stamp of repose and honor by Martin Blank in your institution, this will become what we're known for. A work like Repose at Amber is an addition to the collection that we could never have hoped for and now have achieved. This particular gallery room needed a certain kind of piece to be what it really was meant to be, and Repose in Amber is that piece. When I was young, I was an absolute pyromaniac, and I loved origami. I also used to blow giant soap bubbles and make inflatable rooms that you could wander through. I'm a very kinetic person. I'm that, that kid with ADHD. Okay, so, uh, as I was saying, this is really uncomfortable. I vibrate, you know, I get, that's what I call enthusiasm and excitement. I'm vibrating and this is awesome. And when I'm sculpting, I'm like, yes! There's just a spontaneity and a joy to putting components together and I step back and it's like, it's resonating and it's that tree, it's that landscape, it's the cliff that I stood on. Also, childlike wonderment. You know, when you're a child, you're uninhibited and you're spontaneous. Martin himself is in the top eight of the most important artists of the 21st century. So this is historic in the sense that this is a strong commitment on behalf of this institution to celebrating the best of American sculpture. To make great work, you have to be willing to lose everything all the time. You have to be comfortable with failing. And the people, you know, oh, you're an artist, you must have so much fun. And I'm like, fun, are you like, like sometimes I'm on the floor crying. <laughs> you know, it's ugly, it's horrible. What have I done? I've just spent $10,000 and I have, you know, this is, this is terrible. That usually fades away a little bit later. I get my act back together again and I start over. It's a bolder, braver thing to do what Martin does and get his things around him and start going, yeah, that, that works. Oh, but I don't now like the space that that makes over here. So let's do this so that that space works and the solid works. And to not, I mean, honestly, you don't know exactly what's going to happen. This piece, Repose in Amber, is such a great piece of proof that Martin's approach works. Time and time again, he gets us to where we need to go, and it's a beautiful place to be. The goal was to create individual islands, but that as you walk in, everything foreshortens, and you just see what, abstractly speaking, that this one would represent the head, this would be the big torso, and then the nice round hips, and the long, elongated calf section, and then down at the end are the toes. You know, when you're in bed, your toes are just wiggling, all you see is your toes wiggling at the end of the, and the sheets at the end, and you're always oh, so cozy, and I'm like, oh, I just love climbing into bed. And, and so that was the wiggly, happy toes just down at the, at the far end. Some may see it, some may not, but it was pulled out and stretched out so that from certain vantage points, you could see the totality of this expression. And that was the goal of the piece. And uh, I think we did it. <laughs> this is called three-dimensional light. There's a volume in here forever when the lights are on, where this frequency of rose light or amber light is always going to be projected and collecting in here because the frequency of the light is getting changed as it passes through the color. And it's always going to give you this, I mean, that's magic. <laughs> this is, we call it a stone grind. I intentionally pitted the surface so that you would look at the surface. Here, I've left it open and untouched from the furnace heat so that you can look in and see the veiling and experience another layer of color, another pattern. You spend some time with just this one sculpture and I don't think you go away the same person. Your heart and your imagination are gonna get played with somehow. You know, you go home and after the meal, instead of sitting in front of the tube, you went downstairs in the basement and you started building a strange radio or a set of, you know, bionic devices and think, why am I doing this? And, and I didn't even do it right. I'll do it better tomorrow night. You know, for me, great art should be like an incredible piece of music, you know, where the waves, they, they resonate and that particular tone hits you. 
and you hear what that artist was trying to communicate. And I'm trying to communicate um, a wonderment and an enthusiasm and, 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 a, and a reflection back on the natural world. You know, and we think of our lives as concrete, but they're just this little 80-year-old blip. You know, then it's over. So I want to I do something with this life, and I want to make an object that when you walk up to it, you feel it.